Okay, adsorption is really a critical part of most heterogeneous catalytic processes. And so in this lecture, we're going to start by learning to derive adsorption isotherms. The simplest model is that of Langmuir. It's based on a number of idealized assumptions. One is that molecules are adsorbed at discrete sites, with each site having room for only one adsorbate. The second assumption is that adsorption at a site is independent of events at neighboring sites. So the sites don't sort of crowd each other or or facilitate the adsorption on a neighboring site by creating other lateral interactions between the two. The third assumption is that adsorption occurs by collision of gas molecules with empty sites, and that desorption occurs at the same rate from each occupied site. We're going to rely on a couple of simple notations consistent with what I showed you in the previous lecture. First, we have a notation that indicates an empty site, and that's just an asterisk. We have a, a notation that indicates an A adsorbate, a star represents uh, adsorbed A molecules. We're going to talk about the fraction of sites that are empty, and by that we mean this theta star. Uh, we're going to also talk about the fraction of sites that are covered by A molecules, and that will be theta A. So because these two are both fractions, all sites are either empty or have one A adsorbate, these two things you can see are going to sum to one. Okay, so our Langmuir adsorption isotherm uh, is going to represent the equilibrium for this adsorption process. We have molecules from the gas react with free uh, sites to make A adsorbates. And uh, the first step is just to write down the law of mass action for this particular reaction. Okay, so we have our equilibrium constant on the left. At equilibrium, that's going to be equal to the fraction of A, of A adsorbate sites divided by the concentration of gas molecules, A, and also divided by the fraction of free sites, theta star. In all catalytic processes, we're going to make a site balance. And in this case, since we're talking about fractional occupancy of sites, our site balance has to add to 1. Okay, so we've got 1 is the total fraction of sites, uh, and it's comprised of empty sites and A occupied sites. Now we're going to use this equation, and we're going to, uh, by writing theta A in terms of, of K, and A and theta star. And that allows us to then factor out theta star from the expression and get theta star times 1 plus K times A has to be equal to the total number of sites, which was 1. All right, so now we can solve for the fraction of empty sites and we get this relation. Now from here, we can go on and we can derive quite easily uh, the fraction of sites that are covered with species A, which was our original goal. Okay, so theta star equals 1 over 1 plus Ka, and then I just have to multiply that theta star by K times A, uh, so that's why you see that in the numerator here, and that gives me my adsorption isotherm. This is the fractional coverage of A on the sites as a function of the, uh, as a function of the concentration of A in the gas phase. Embedded in here are the temperature effects. Okay, so this adsorption constant might be a strong function of temperature. When we talk about an isotherm, we're saying at a fixed temperature, the adsorbed fraction of A is going to be just a function of the concentration of A in the gas phase. And it looks like this, right? So this is the prediction of the Langmuir isotherm, is that you get uh, coverage of 1 when you're at saturation way out here at very, very large values of the concentration of A. This is going to 1. And when it's very small, when the concentration of A is very small, then Ka is going to be much smaller than 1, and this uh, curve is going to look approximately like Ka. Okay, so at very small pressures, at very small concentrations in the gas phase, it looks like Ka. At very large ones, it looks approximately like 1. All right, so we could also go through and explicitly write this in terms of partial pressures. That would be a slightly modified equilibrium constant K to account for the change of activity definition. But then you would get Kp times the partial pressure of A over 1 plus Kp times the partial pressure of A. And of course, you know, it'd be a good idea for all of you to go back, use the ideal gas law, relate the partial pressure of A to the concentration of A, and absorb any factors of Kt, Kbt, that appear in there into this Kp definition, okay? And you'll get a relationship because of that between the equilibrium constant K and the equilibrium constant K sub P. I'm gonna leave that as an exercise for the students to go through, uh, but what we're going to do now is to talk about competitive adsorption. 
Okay, so in the Langmuir adsorption isotherm, we had an individual species in the gas phase that could adsorb onto our sites. Now what we're going to do is just generalize that to the case where there are many species that can adsorb onto the empty sites, uh, still obeying the rule that each site only has room for one adsorbate. Uh, so that's why it's competitive. I can decide whether whether B is going to win that, that competition or whether A is going to win that competition to, to attach to those sites. They're going to have different equilibrium constants, which is really going to modulate a competition. And so each one of these species is going to have an equilibrium relation like this, right? So, so A adsorbs with equilibrium constant Ka, and that means I can write down this mass action expression for the coverage of A and the coverage of bare sites and the concentration of A. Likewise, I do that for every species that is involved in my competitive adsorption process. And, you know, for B, I get one that looks exactly the same, except that it's, it's different here in the... Uh, in the concentration of the gas phase, we're looking at B now, and we're also having a different equilibrium constant. Now, the, the one term that doesn't change is that we always have this site balance. So it adds to one, comprised of a fraction of empty sites, a fraction of sites covered with A, a fraction of sites covered with B, etc. Adding up all of the coverages, all the coverages except for the empty site. Um, so this is one minus the coverages of all the species uh, that are not empty sites, uh, which is really just to say that that's theta star. Theta star times the sum over all of the gas phase concentrations, right? So this is just this is just adding up all of these things. Now what we can do is solve for this fraction of covered sites. Okay, so the fraction of sites that are covered, we're solving for the fraction of covered sites here. So this is everything except for the empty site concentration. Uh, has to be equal to the sum over all of the equilibrium constants multiplied by their respective concentrations over 1 plus the sum over all the equilibrium constants multiplied by their respective concentrations. That has to give you the fraction of empty sites uh, is equal to 1 over 1 plus the sum over i, uh, ki, uh, times the concentration of i. All right, so now, given this quantity, we really have the ability to easily generate anything else we want. Okay, so if we wanted the concentration of sites that are covered with A, we know that it's related to the concentration of empty sites from this relation right here, uh, and I will have an expression uh, multiplied by the original expression for theta star, and then I will have the expression for the coverage of species A. So that one is going to give us Ka over 1 plus Ka, KBB, KCC, etc., and you keep on going all the way out till you've exhausted all the species that influence the denominator uh, of this expression. You can do the same thing for any other species in here. And this generates your competitive isotherm. So if I plot the concentration of A, for example, and I look at theta A, it again has this form. Okay? It again has this form that's coming up and going eventually to 1. Of course, the rate at which this goes up now depends on all of the other species involved uh, in, in this denominator term, okay? All the other species can, can influence things. A little bit more difficult for me to say exactly how this, how this takes off. I don't know this slope without knowing what some of these other terms are. But eventually, as A goes to infinity, the KAA term will be the dominant one, and I will end up out here with the same asymptote going to one. And that's true for any one of these individual species. Okay, now we're going to talk about another case. This is dissociative adsorption, as in the example that I talked about in the previous video, where we have hydrogen reacting with two empty sites to give me two hydrogen add atoms on the surface. Now, this is obviously a chemisorption step, and it might have an activation barrier. Rather than just assume off the bat that this is going to be equilibrated, we're going to treat it as though you have a forward and a backward rate constant. We could get all the same results if we just made the assumption right from the beginning that this was quasi-equilibrated, uh, but, but let's go ahead and practice doing it this other way. Forward reaction rate, uh, the adsorption step, is going to be K1 times the concentration of H2 in the gas phase times the fractional coverage of empty sites squared. Okay, so that comes from mass action in the usual manner. We're assuming when we build these mechanisms with multiple steps that we are talking about elementary uh, reactions for each individual step. The concentration of, of hydrogen comes from member of the stoichiometric equation. Theta star squared comes from the fact that we have two empty sites participating in the reaction. Now, the, re the desorption reaction rate 
is k minus 1 constant times theta h squared. So this is squared activity of two h at atoms. These two rates uh, have to come to equilibrium, uh, and, and so that's going to be key to our to our analysis. But first, let's write down our site balance equation. So we have 1 is equal to the fraction of empty sites plus the fraction of sites with an h at atom. And at equilibrium, we know that these two forward and backward rates must also uh, balance each other. Okay, so uh, I could I skipped a step here. Let me fill that in. Uh, this was k1 sitting here and a k minus 1 sitting here. If I divide both sides by k minus 1 in this equation, I end up with just a factor of k here, and, uh, and we don't need the individual rate constants anymore. So I could have written down this equation from the beginning by just putting an equilibrium constant up here and constructing the mass action ratio for the equilibrium constant that way. Okay, the same final result. Notice I've already eliminated my theta star here. Um, you can go through and you can do the algebra this way. You can also go through and do it by rewriting theta h. So I can simplify that and I solve for theta h and I get the square root of k times h2 over 1 plus the square root of k times h2. So this is a, a different kind of isotherm than the one that we saw before. For example, if this was very simply, you know, there probably are no h atoms in the gas phase, but if they were coming in and attaching to the surface according to a reactor. All right, so this is the fractional coverage of H adsorbates as a function of the, the partial pressure or the concentration of H2 gas out in solution. And this is uh, completely different from the kind of result that we would have gotten if we had a simple, you know, H atoms in the gas phase are hard to come by. Uh, but let's suppose that they just reacted in some very simple, straightforward way, adsorption process like this. Uh, could be, for example, a Langmuir adsorption process, uh, then I know that what I would get would be something that looks like this. Uh, so this is a very different kind of pressure dependence than the one that you see here. Uh, so imagine that x is, uh, is basically my variable k times the relevant gas phase species. So it could be k times h2, uh, or it could be k times the h if we're looking at, at this thing. Okay, so as this, this concentration of H2 in the gas phase goes up, we immediately, because it's proportional, because it's actually a function of the square root here, it immediately rises, you know, the, with an infinite slope here at the beginning and comes up very quickly at the beginning and then levels off to the usual asymptote of uh, complete coverage. That's different from the case where we had uh, just a first order dependence on the gas phase concentration uh, for the Langmuir adsorption. Then we saw, in, in this case, we saw this gradual rise at the beginning uh, where it was actually proportional to KH with a finite slope at the beginning. Okay, so the associative adsorption has this signature that it's going to be a very, very strong function of, uh, the coverage is going to be a very strong function of the gas phase concentration down here in the low pressure limit.